Oh. You know, I, I think I'm finally starting to understand this book. and welcome back to Arkham Week. So now I'm gonna look at Batman Arkham Asylum. Again. For maybe the third time. I, I, or maybe, I think this is the second time I've been reviewing this. I reviewed it. Last time I, when Arkham Asylum came out, I reviewed a bunch of Arkham themed stuff and I like that idea. That's why I'm doing Arkham Week. But uh, So Arkham Asylum. This is probably the book that led to all the other stories about Arkham Asylum, all the other mini-stories. It, 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 just, it made Arkham Asylum such an interesting place, an interesting, psychological, terrible, intriguing, mysterious, gothic place. And, you know, as soon as people read this, they will other people had their own idea of what they wanted to write about Arkham Asylum. So that's why we have all this other Arkham stuff, and that's why we eventually got the video games as well. You can arguably say it would be because of... It all started from this Batman tale, written by Grant Morrison. So, the story isn't... It doesn't seem to be one that's too out of place. It's basically these inmates got free somehow and have taken over the asylum. And they only want one thing. Batman. And so Joker makes a request that since they have hostages, Joker says Batman needs to come or else he'll torture and kill the hostages. And so Batman enters the asylum and tries to hang on to his sanity while in this gothic place while we also get some history of Arkham Asylum's origins from its creator Amadeus Arkham. Uh, I want to talk about the artwork to start off because this art style is what Arkham Asylum Madness was trying to be. It was trying to be extremely stylized and gothic and stuff that you didn't even fully know what you were looking at. But, and that's what this is, and that's definitely what that other one wasn't. That other one was just horrible art. But this art is amazing. It, it is such a unique... I've never seen art like this in a, in a comic book before, okay? When I got this, I got it just solely because everyone was saying, Oh, it's one of the best Batman books ever written. And so, I, so I'm like, wow, that's a real... Because look, that cover is almost says it all. I don't even know how Joker's face even works. I mean, is it are those fangs? Is he smiling? Or is it, it... But it drew me in. It drew me in to want it. Really. So I, I picked it up. And the art in here is so stylized and... And... And why... Well, I, I don't even... There's not even a word for it sometimes. Like, some of the shots will just... They will look... You know, something that's not too far of a stretch for a comic book, but a lot of it is just so strange, and strange is definitely the word that would define the art in here. You know, Joker in here looks more like a monster than a human, and Batman is always drawn so he almost looks like a 2D figure all the time. You rare, you don't even get one shot of his face, you know, his full face. It's mostly just shots of him in the shadows, and, well, I guess we do get some shots of his face, that's not true, but mostly it's just him in the shadows, and, like, take a look at this shot, where Batman almost looks like he's fading away in the shot, It's just, but, and it's so, done so well. Sometimes, though, it, it can be a little bit too much stylized, where you, you find 
yourself thinking, what? What just happened? And, and that that's maybe one of the book's problems is sometimes I, I just don't get it. Like, there's a point, the point, the uh, Joker has Batman in the asylum, and then he says, all right, we're going to give you a half hour head start, go in the asylum, then we're going to play a game of hide and seek, and we will find you, basically. But there's a part where Batman's just left, where he's just running around the asylum and he's thinking about his parents he just takes out a piece of glass and stabs himself in the hand and I'm thinking wow why did you just do that as I said before though sometimes the book seems like it's too smart for me you know when you feel like when stuff like that happens you don't feel like well that's over the top and a mistake you feel like Okay, I, I know this symbolizes something, and I know it means something. I'm not entirely sure the what. So it's not ex exactly saying that it's bad written. Uh, maybe it could have been explained why he did that more, you know. But maybe it's just, it's just diving into the psychological place of Arkham Asylum. It's hard to hang on to your sanity, and maybe just pain is a reminder of how to, it's just a reminder of where you are. But in any case, this is not a book where you're just going to be like, da, 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 flipping through the pages. Do, 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 do. You know, you need to make sure you look at every panel carefully. Because not only is it drawn amazingly, but it is also important that you have to pay attention in order to know what's going on. I think that's probably why there aren't a whole lot of art styles like this and why I haven't seen another one again, especially in mainstream comics, is because it'd be harder for newer readers to follow along. And definitely harder for people who aren't used to this style. Like, I was thrown off about it the first time I saw it, I read it. I was thrown off like, wow, this is a little too weird for me. But as eventually as I got into the story and what its qualities were, I fell in love with the book, of course. Batman is written really well. He barely says a word. And when he does it, it's only to say something that's important. And Joker, of course, talks all the time. Saying nothing that of anything that's important, usually. But he comes across as sadistic and just creepy. You know... This is not a Joker I can laugh at. So obviously it doesn't mean he's my favorite Joker. Because usually I like a Joker that I can laugh at even if, if he's doing bad things. Not while he's doing bad things. But, you know, I usually can laugh at him. But this Joker I wouldn't laugh at. He's creepy. And, you know, but I like that. You know, it's definitely a good fit for this book. If he was... Cracking actual jokes, it would feel way off. This is perfect. This, this, uh, the, it's written perfectly for the way he looks. The Amadeus Arkham parts in here also are really good because, see, the, the main theme in this book is just madness. And one of, one of the quotes is, sometimes madness is what makes us who we are. And, and that's, that, that's kind of true in Batman's case. He's, he almost is mad, you know, in, in, in the way he is. And as, when Joker is talking to me, he even says, come to the asylum. This is where you belong. You know, you are mad. We all are. And, and, and it's perfect. They have this perfect quote in the opening from Alice in Wonderland, you know, where Alice says, you know, I don't want to go around mad people. And the cashier cat says, you have to. We're all mad here. I'm mad, you're mad, and she says, well, how do you know I'm mad? He's like, and he says, well, if you weren't mad, you wouldn't be here. It's kind of the same with Arkham Asylum. And, you know, not every character talks. Not every, uh, like, like, there's a big fight scene with Killer Croc, and Killer Croc doesn't say one word. In fact, neither does Batman. It's just, it uh, has, um... It has captions of Amadeus Arkham talking over it <clears throat> that play off the uh, the fight of Batman ha that Batman is having. It plays off what he is talking about. 
So, you know, if, if madness is what makes us who we are, does embracing that make us even more insane? You know, like, uh, one of my favorite things what they do in this is, um, basically, uh, they're trying to cure people at the asylum, of course, right? Trying, the main word there. Uh, and they, they do this experiment with Two-Face, where they take away his coin and they give him a die. So instead of only two choices, he has six. And then they moved him off that into something else. And now he's on these tarot cards. Or something like that. And it's like, uh... So now he has like 78 choices. But the problem is, there's so many choices, he can't make simple decisions. Because with the coin, it was just, poof, good side, bad. Poof, poof. But now he has all these choices, it's impossible for him to make a cohesive choice. You know, he can't even decide to go to the bathroom. He can't decide the simplest things. And, you know, even if the coin, it was part of his madness, sometimes it is madness that makes us who we are. This book is really hard to explain. It's one of the more of those things you have to experience in order to really get it. And that's kind of what it is. And it's an experience. This doesn't really f seem to be in the Batman continuity. Not that it would be too far of a stretch for it to be out of the Batman continuity. But uh, it doesn't seem to be in there. And and uh, the Amadeus Arkham stuff has been put into the Batman normal Batman continuity. But it, it's so unique in the style that is presented. The art is so over the top stylized in a great way uh, that it, it's, it's a strange experience, but a truly wonderful experience for any comic book reader. You guys need to read this. So I have the 15th anniversary edition that actually has the original transcripts in the back. And it's kind of interesting to look at this because this actually has, uh, you know, it actually looking at it, it you get it's it's easier to understand things when you can see what Grant Morrison was trying to portray in these shots. You're like, oh, okay, I get it now. Like, so it's uh, it's 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 easier to follow along with that too once you've read it. But this book is simply an amazing Batman experience. One of my favorites, and it's the reason we have all this other Arkham stuff today. It's the reason why Arkham Asylum is probably the most iconic place in comic. If you haven't read Batman Arkham Asylum and you're a Batman fan, what's wrong with you? I'm sorry. <laughs> Sometimes we don't have money. But if you can, get this, read this. An amazing Batman experience. An amazing comic book experience. I would recommend this for any comic book fan who's getting a little tired of the whole cut and dry comic book way of telling stories, you know, where you can clear, like, you know, most are, you can always tell what's going on. And here, sometimes it's a little hard and you need to really look at the panels and really study them in order to really understand it. And you, normally that's a hindrance, but in this, in a Batman book, it excels because of it. And this gothic dark story with this extremely stylized and dark art is a perfect combination for a Batman story. One, of my, one thing I want to say is there's a part in here where Batman visits Maxi Zeus. You know, usually the guy in the toga... Yeah, that's always a I am Zeus! You will taste my lightning! You know, the lame guy. You know, but in this, he's ho he's an entire, like, living energy of electricity. And he's quoting, uh, well, probably Zeus. Uh, and he looks like such a mythical, interesting being that I'm just like, why isn't Maxi Zeus like this in the normal comic books? This would this looks so much more interesting. <coughs> so yeah, that's that's I think's about all I have to say. 
Batman Arkham Asylum is just a great book and an amazing experience for any comic book fan to enjoy. So thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to check out the rest of the stuff on Arkham Week and wait for the more stuff coming soon. So I am giving Batman Arkham Asylum an 8.5 out of 10. So, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Remember, of course, I'm LazyDude99, and if I don't like it, it's not worth it. See you around. Be sure to check out more of my other videos on my channel, and wait for more coming soon.